A wizard stick figure man with a face that screams post nut regret, who would seemingly stand on anything, anyone, and anywhere to only be blessed by the holy algorithm and even gained a reaction from the man with all the synthetic schlongs. This past week has been absolutely nuts, and I'll be honest, I'm still catching up with it. Now, typically, people prepare for these videos. They usually see the milestone coming and think about what they're going to say, but it all happened so fast and in such a short period of time that I can only apologize for this being a bit late. This is what went well with Wicked Wizard and uh, oh boy, there's a lot to talk about. But before any of that, Thank you. Thank you to all the nice comments. Thank you to all the genuinely good constructive criticism. And of course, thank you to all of the new and existing Patreons who are helping to give this channel a financial backbone so that I don't need to promote the latest VPN, ball care product, or crappy mobile game. If it wasn't clear already, we've reached over 100k. Uh what, I don't even know how we got to that point, but to see all this new excitement around the What Went Wrong series is honestly amazing. It's really good to see that you guys are enjoying this content. However, for a while now, I've been struggling to figure out what to actually do with this channel. It's really not been easy, and I only have myself to blame for that. But finally, I'm making content that not only I enjoy, but you guys seem to enjoy as well. And to be honest with you, that's all I really want. In this video, we're going to go through a brief time timeline of where I started from zero subs to how we got to 100k. I hope this video can also be of use to smaller content creators. 100k is one hell of a milestone, but if this idiot right here can do it, I'm sure you will too. There are also a few questions from you lot, and I'll answer those towards the end. I think the best place to start is an answer as to why I wanted to do YouTube in the first place. The short answer is I had a bit of free time and I've always wanted to do it. In fact, I've always wanted to do YouTube since I was at school. I actually had a YouTube channel back in the whole MW2 days where making cringy montages were the popular thing. Back then, I didn't have a penny to my name and neither did my family. My setup was pretty ghetto as well. I had one of those old fat TVs. It was a one of the little blue ones. And I would record the screen with my crappy Nokia that I would set up on a box right in front of me. The issue with this setup is that the only times that I could really play games were when the sun was still up. So I had to counteract this by putting a blanket over both myself and the screen to get rid of any screen glare. Because unfortunately our curtains weren't the best. But regardless of any of that, I had an absolute love for creating content. Though sadly, this channel didn't survive for long. Word got out about my crappy channel in school and I'll never forget the utter embarrassment where a kid that I thought was my friend showed the whole class in an IT session my videos. You see, every Everybody else doing it back then had these capture cards, they also had access to editing software, and they could make pretty good videos. I didn't have any of that, in fact I only just recently got access to the internet. And to be fair, my videos were absolute crap, but it meant a lot to me. With my videos being the laughing stock of the day, I took it all to heart and I just shut down the channel. This was my first ever time doing YouTube and it was terrible, but such is life at school. Many years later, in 2020, we of course had the pandemic which threw the whole world into lockdown. And with a bunch of free time as well as a bit of money on the side, I had to think about what I wanted to do for the next few years that wasn't just work and paying into a pension. I'm a firm believer that you need to try as many things as possible before you get married and have kids. Even if that's not going to happen for you in life, you're going to have some responsibility that's going to take up the majority of your time. So I thought this would be the best time for me to start YouTube and this time do it without the blanket over the screen. This channel right here is technically my second. My first is this one, Wicked Wizard. And on this channel, I played a hell of a lot of Noita, a really good roguelike sandbox with some of the best mods I've seen on a game. There's actually a mod where you can play as a space marine. If that doesn't sell it for you, then I honestly don't know what will. And it's what I'm playing in the background here for the sake of nostalgia. I tried a whole bunch of things with this channel, from Let's Play style videos to mod showcases, to getting NPCs to fight each other, and even making mods that I use to create my own challenges. I shit you not, I beat the game as a sheep. And sheep in this game are pretty much a one-hit kill. I'm not flexing, I'm just saying.
Okay, maybe I'm flexing a little bit, but goddamn am I proud of it. The problem that I had with this channel, though, is that I'm a self-confessed tryhard. When I obsess about something, I put my all into it. Remember when I talked about perfectionism in that Cube World video? Well, I was talking from experience, as each of these videos would take absolutely ages to make, and all of it was within my already limited free time. It didn't have to be that way, though, but I have a habit of overcomplicating things for myself and making my life harder than it should be. This channel was the first time I reached 100 subscribers. 50 subscribers. Hell, I even remember being super excited to get 10. But before the channel could even get to 1,000 subscribers, I gave up. I was making videos that I was genuinely proud of, but it was all too much for me. My personal life struggled, and I lost contact with a lot of friends throughout the process. After making a whole bunch of videos on this channel, in June of 2021, I had a week to myself which was meant to be for holiday, but unfortunately, due to the situation at the time, that never happened. And although I say unfortunately, without this week, this channel right here probably would have never existed. With this free time, I had a good think about what I wanted to do with the Wicked Wizard channel. I watched countless videos on how to improve my content, but I couldn't help feel like I was putting in too much effort. In hindsight, I could have just dialed it down a bit, but I felt like I already set a standard for the channel that I just couldn't live up to. It's actually really interesting looking back and seeing how I approached this situation. I think one of the main reasons as to why I wanted to set up a completely different channel is to start off with a completely different standard, when all I really needed to do was just change my content strategy. And this now brings us onto this channel, the Wicked Wiz channel. The goal from the start before it evolved into what it is today was purely to make quick, easy content so that I can enjoy making content while still having some free time to myself. However, instead of gaming content, I wanted to try my hand at something else. I was watching a lot of Rise and Fall channels at the time, a lot of drama about specific topics. So I decided to leave the gaming in the background and talk about topics that were on my mind. Although my commentary didn't really provide too much additional value to the topic in hand, it was fun to talk about stuff. I mean, we've gone through some of the Earth 2 drama at the time, talking about the fall of Matthew Santoro, and some crappy Kickstarters that were unlisted because I unironically thought that they deviated too much from the focus of this channel. Actually, fun fact, the first video on this channel was just me reacting to a dating sim about foot fetish. Even the developer of the game was kind enough to offer me a key, but I never got that key, so, you know, if you're still out there, you want to give me that key, and if it doesn't get me banned from Twitch, I am more than happy to play it in front of, I hope, not too many people. The views were already better on this channel, and I was putting in way less effort than before. So, all good, right? Well, something about this didn't feel right, but I didn't really know at the time what it was. After the third video about Matthew Santoro deep-throating his mic, I had my first go at a sort of video essay about the 40-year-old virgin Skippy. It's a decent watch, and I had to go through a lot of uncomfortable content to make it. But this next phase of the channel is what I would like to describe as a complete clusterfuck as I went from talking about the whole Chris Chan situation to just some guy without a moustache, to commentary channels, and eventually James Corden, of all people. I was at a point where I honestly didn't really know what I was doing. This just became a dumping ground for anything that came to my mind. However, in this period of time, I was learning a lot about editing and trying to make my videos more engaging. I strayed away from the gaming content and was now talking about topical people and things that I wasn't all too invested in. The James Corden video was the first one to hit over 1 million views, but with a whole bunch of new viewers coming in, there was a problem. Nobody really had anywhere else to go from here. All I had was just a bunch of random videos, none of which were branded or had a consistent style. Don't get me wrong, it was great to gain a load of subscribers at the time and similar to this situation, in a very short period of time as well. We ended up gaining over about 20k or I think 22k subscribers by that time. The lesson learned here is that YouTube isn't really about trying to get the most amount of subscribers. It's about growing a community and providing content that people want to keep watching. There's a reason why so many channels seem to just do the same thing for a long period of time. They find something that works and they stick with it because people come back for that. They know what to expect. It doesn't have to be 
the exact same content either. It could just be a certain topic. After the James Corden video, there was also this unlisted video that gained a lot of views. It's the video about the green hoodie guy that got told to be quiet at a speedrunning event. In this video, I wanted to see where he is now and what happened since his moment of fame. Turns out, it was a lot of cringe. I was watching a lot of wavy web surf back then, so I gained inspiration from that kind of content. However, unlike him, I did a pretty terrible job because this video only brings up the negatives and doesn't seek to find any positives. I don't think this video was that bad and a lot of people seem to like it, but I enlisted it because all it did was shine light on someone who was clearly trying to get back on their feet. I understand that there's a market for this kind of content and a lot of people do like watching stuff like that, but I decided that it wasn't right for me and I really wasn't the right person for the job. Coming up to 2022, I tried a few more things. Firstly, I gave my final thoughts on the whole Matthew Santora situation. If you didn't know, for a time he was being quite toxic on Twitch, acting very childish and he was called out for this within the Dead by Daylight community. But from what I hear now, he's doing much better and has patched things up with other streamers. I honestly wish him the best and I hope he figures things out with his YouTube channel. There was also a video about doors where I wanted to explore looking at the design behind everyday things. I made some more Kickstarter videos which you guys seem to enjoy quite a lot. The only issue with that kind of content is that it's quite difficult to find a crappy Kickstarter but if there are any game projects that are clearly scams or there's a lot of skepticism behind them I'm more than happy to cover it. I also stupidly made a promise on the James Corden video saying that for only 500 likes I would watch the latest Cinderella film with him in it. Of course that happened and I even watched it with my mate Noble Lucy who if you haven't already feel free to check that guy out he does a whole bunch of awesome content and we may just be collaborating on something quite big later on this year. Not to mention that I recently did a similar thing with a Hello Neighbor video. Turns out I've got to play Hello Neighbor 2 at some point but you know what at least it's a game it's not a bloody film with a whole bunch of copyright. It just seems like every time I make a promise in a video that video in particular blows up. First James Corden now Hello Neighbor. So if you want a YouTube hack just say that you're going to do something for a very small amount of likes and the algorithm will beat the living crap out of you. In the new year of this year 2022 I finally sat down and reviewed this channel. I tried a lot of things but I didn't find anything that I truly enjoyed. I went from something I love which is gaming to some things that were completely different. Although now I'm proud to say that this is going to be the last identity change to this channel. I'm going to focus on anything that's related to gaming. If that's going to be the NFTs or a new kind of NFT comes in claiming that they're going to be useful in the metaverse, then I'll make a video about it. If there's a really overhyped scam project, then I'll do my best to cover it. And you can see that before the whole what went wrong series came about, I already started to do that. I shared my thoughts on NFTs while playing a Doom mod in the background where you snap JPEGs. I heard about this crappy play to earn game and gave my perspective on that and also I guess the space in general. And then finally, I decided to execute the plan that I've been working on in the background where I explored a game that I supported financially and gave an overview of what went wrong with that game. This video right here is the most fun I've had on this platform in a long time. In fact, I loved it so much that I decided to turn this into a whole series. I didn't care if it got any views. In fact, I started off with negative subscribers after posting it, but that didn't matter. For once, I would commit to a series and stick to it. If it wasn't already obvious from my latest video on Firefall, I'm a big fan of the man with the mugs. Josh Strife Hayes and his worst MMO ever series had me hooked and I was binge watching every single worst MMO video I could find. After watching one, I would get a recommendation for another. Then I'd watch another and the same thing would happen. Just by the thumbnail on its own, I already knew who it was and what I was going to expect. And this got me excited for each and every single video because the videos themselves are really good. And it's still my favorite second monitor content to watch even to this day. So it became clear to me that I needed to take note as this is how you grow an audience. 
This is what's going to make people come back for more. And for me, all it took was for one video to blow up. And just as I suspected, so did all the other videos with the same thumbnail and same title. This is how YouTube works. There are many challenges, but the hardest one for me was trying to figure out what kind of content makes me feel happy that other people enjoy. The one big takeaway from all of this is that when you're making content, it's okay to experiment with a bunch of different things. But once you figure out what works for you, you need to stick with it. Keep things consistent and always strive to make each video as entertaining and as informative as possible. People should be able to recognize your content and get excited for it the moment it pops up in their recommended or on their home screen. What's important is encouraging your drive for what you do at the very core. All I care about is making content that we can all enjoy. If I'm not enjoying it, what's the point? And if it's not entertaining to you anymore, you gotta let me know why. None of this is one-sided. I wouldn't be here if people weren't watching my stuff. And just like any content creator, I need you more than you need me. So I'll be damned if I take any of this for granted. So if you couldn't tell already, the future of this channel is gonna consist largely of a lot more what went wrong videos. I will make the odd video about a certain topic, but it's gonna be related to what we actually care about. And that's things within the gaming industry. There are some scam projects that I really wanna to cover but I, I already feel like people are doing a pretty good job of that anyway either way i've got nothing but excitement for the future of this channel so that was my uh, brief history of my time on this platform i've learned a lot on the way and trust me i have still got a lot more to learn so now on to some questions that you guys had in my last community post and if you missed out on that feel free to just post your questions down in the comments below. I'll make sure to answer as many as I can. Ethan Battle says, congrats on the 100K. Thank you. Have you had any major inspirations that have helped you become who you are and helped shape your channel? Yeah, dude. Like, I mean, Pyrocynical's long form content where he dives deep into a game, um, that inspired me quite a lot. I know that that's not really what I do. I kind of look at the game. I have a look at what happened behind the scenes a bit. Uh, and then I kind of come to the conclusion based on what I've seen. Of course, as I mentioned before, Josh Drive Hayes, I think what I really liked about his content is that he didn't just do a review, he kind of took you through the story of the game, the story of his experience. And I'll be doing that as well with We Happy Few. In fact, I'm playing it straight after this and gonna try and finish that game and uh, get the video together. In terms of other inspiration as well, I, I don't really know what else kind of comes to mind. I, I think with the What Went Wrong series, my inspiration was out of my curiosity pretty much to see what went wrong with Interstellar Marines. Uh, it's a game that I, I invested into, I put some money into, should I say, back in the day. I wanted to see where it is now and it didn't look good, so I wanted to see what went wrong. The Shower of Slime says, congratulations, sprinkles confetti, thank you. Please do some more pointless Kickstarter tech. That's actually how I discovered your channel many moons back. Keep up the good work and keep standing in the strangest of places. I'll do my best, but yeah, the pointless Kickstarter tech, I, I think I mentioned it a bit earlier in this video. Anyway, it's quite difficult to find crappy Kickstarters. I think back in the day with the iDub series, uh, that was probably the, the golden era to do it. I kind of wanted to relive that a little bit, but you know, if you if there's a scam project out there, especially if it's a game that people are getting really hyped for, but something seems fishy, I'm more than happy to have a look at it because stuff like that is always interesting to follow. Thomas Van D. Kirk, that's an awesome name, says, good for you, mate. You deserve this. I had a question though. Are you going to focus your content on games that flopped or also different genres of items? The focus is going to be games. The What Went Wrong series is still very new, so hopefully it doesn't die out too quickly but I know it's going to stagnate like any series does. I don't want to hang on to it for too long and then complain saying, why are people not watching my videos anymore? I mean, we've, we've seen what happened to Matthew Santoro when he was doing the same thing over and over and over again. Things stagnate. As great as a series is, it gets boring over time. So yeah, I'm going to have a look and see what I can change up in the future. When I have more free time, I'm also going to see what else I can do on the side. I do want to do some more in-depth videos looking at games that I really like or you guys really like as well and have a look 
look at certain aspects that made them really good. Andy Leenisht, I hope that's how I pronounce your name. What's your favorite video game genre? Mine is RPGs. Well, mine is also RPGs, to be honest. I like things where I can really customize and do a bit of role playing myself, right? I, I like games that give you that sense of freedom. I'm really big into the, the whole Soul series. It also highly depends on my mood. So if I, I if I honestly don't want to put any brain power into anything, I will go ahead and play some Bloons TDM or a really good sandbox game called World Box. Vault Chip says, maybe at some point updates to the What Went Wrong series. I would love to see what happened with Interstellar Marines. That story is the most tragic. Just wanted to make a fun game. Yeah, I mean, if a game comes back from the grave, then I will probably cover it again like do an update video, see what's going on. I think with Interstellar Marines in particular, if those guys manage to get funding and just make the game that they've been wanting to make for like over a decade now, I would be really happy for them. And I, I honestly, I, I can't wait to try it. Creeper Enderman says, good job for 100K. Thank you. How could you do suggestions for the What Went Wrong series? Well, this is the moment in the video where I'm going to ask you if you haven't already to subscribe and hit the bell notification. I do community posts where I kind of put a list of games that I, I sort of want to have a look at, but then I want you guys to verify that, maybe suggest some more things. And then I pick those top three in the comments and we do a poll so we can uh, actually vote on it and then make a confirmed choice. So yeah, keep an eye out for the community posts. I actually use them fairly frequently. Splitted Spark says, how surprising was the success or was it planned? Also, the skit where you tell us where you are slash stand, can viewers bring ideas for that? I'll answer that one first. Yes, you can. Um, I'm not going to do any polls or anything like that. It, it's not too deep. If I see a recommendation in the comments and I like it, I'll go for it. But to be honest with you, I just come up with it um, from the top of my head. But yeah, I can say that this was very surprising to me. Um, I wasn't expecting this level of growth in such a short period of time. I don't want to sound too cocky, but from my experience with the James Corden video where that blew up, I, I learned one thing. If I make a if I make a series or if I make a video about a specific game in this situation, like the Hello Neighbor one that really blew up, then all it takes is for one of those videos in that series to blow up and all the other ones are going to very quickly be recommended to people who have watched that. So I did kind of suspect that there would be some kind of growth but over 125k subscribers, I've just checked it now, it's 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 insane. I honestly was not expecting that, hence why this is uh, well overdue. Lacked Plays says, I really, really love your videos. Well, thank you. Glad you enjoy them. Any tips for working on or creating my own content and learning as a creator? One thing that I've noticed is that you need to do a lot of planning in the background. If you want to make videos like this, obviously you need to write a script, you need to do research. I'm not going to say my research is perfect either, but you, you got to do as much as you can. The editing and stuff, you don't really need to worry about too much, to be honest. It's the content itself. you got to ask yourself the question of, is this video inherently interesting? What key points in this video are going to keep people hooked? And when you deliver that, you need to tell a story. Like I said, it really doesn't matter too much about the editing. Obviously, you want to have good audio quality. So if people put it on in the background, they can hear you properly. I mean, for example, I, I still use a Blue Yeti, right? I got this for £40. It's a USB mic. It's cheap. And I try my best to make the content as interesting as possible. So the, uh, I guess what we can call the background noise, the actual video itself doesn't really need to be there. It's really just there to show what's going on. This next one is a little bit long, but I'll summarize. Reese Joyce asks me how long it takes me to make my videos. Also, what kind of software I use and what's my setup. I can tell you for a fact, it definitely takes me a lot longer than four hours. I, I don't know where I said that. I think maybe some videos probably could take about four hours, but the videos that I do now take a lot longer than that. I usually work at the end of the day, so I don't have that many hours to spare, hence why the videos take a while to come out. But it could take me a full two weeks to finalize a video. But even if I had a full day to myself and I worked a full 24 hours, I still wouldn't be able to finish the video. As mentioned in the previous comment, I use a Blue Yeti for my mic. I've got a pop filter in front of it as well, so you don't hear all the p -p 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 noises as badly. I also have a fairly decent PC, but my graphics card is absolute ass. I have a GTX 1060, currently only 16 gigabytes of RAM because one of my sticks broke, but my CPU is the thing that I spent the most money on because I needed it for, for editing and rendering, and that is an AMD Ryzen 9 3900X. I also use Premiere Pro for all of my editing, so yeah, I mean, it's not the most perfect thing to use. It does cost money. But my theory when it comes to editing is that if you have the money at
at your disposal to use a higher end software, then it's better to start learning that now than later. Obama OnlyFans, uh, <laughs> Nice name. It says, my one question is how your animation skills are so good. I don't know, man. Like, you just got to do a whole bunch of online courses, get yourself a degree or something like that, and then, yeah, you're ready to go. I mean, to get to my level of animation, it takes a little bit more time, but, you know, you'll get there. Max G asks, how do you maintain such a luscious beard? Ah, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of cream by the looks of it. <laughs> and which video are you most proud of? Most recently, the Hello Neighbor one, and it's not really because of the views, it's because of the absolute torment trying to get through that. I, I Honestly, I was so proud of myself getting through every single alpha. I didn't even go through the betas and then playing through the full game as well. It was painful, but getting towards the end of it was such a relief. I also really liked the doors video because it, honestly, like when it comes to the design of everyday things, it still amazes me how people can get something like a door completely wrong. Mr. Inspector asks, when was the last time your milk expired and turned fluffy? It's never happened. I drink so much of it so fast it can never expire. Cat Brock asks, what's your opinion on bagels or are you more of a donut kind of guy? I'm going to be real honest with you right now. Bagels are nice, okay? They're nice. But nothing beats going to the seaside and getting a freshly made warm donut. Zegob asks, do you prefer banana pudding or chocolate pudding? I think banana pudding all the way. A, it's funny when I say banana. And B, I need potassium. Lils asks me, have I ever made a video game before making YouTube videos? And the answer is yes on Unity. I don't have anything to show for it because whatever progress I made completely died when I had to reset my PC, but I did buy a whole bunch of courses on Udemy when they had a, a special offer, and one of my aspirations is to make a game. I've got some ideas for what that might be, but we're gonna have to see in the future how that turns out. So that was it for the questions, and that is pretty much it for the video. Thank you guys for watching if you made it this far. Next week is gonna be a new video, but if you wanna catch me in my streams every Thursday night, go ahead over over to my Twitch and follow me there. I'd also like to say a massive thanks to the Patreons. You guys are honestly going out of your way just to support this channel. It's it's so appreciated. You have no idea. And a special thanks to the Wicked Slayers, FBI, Negadan, Noah Heisman, Chris, and also all of these Cyber Wizards, Alex Caprol, Basto, Daddy Fabianski, Enchanted Dreamer, Finnera, Gorgonzola, King Delirious, Mark Nen, Rare Alex, and William Steele. Anyway, I'll I'll see you guys in the next one where, like I said before, I'm going to be standing in a Reddit mods basement. Wish me luck.